Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you to say hi and all that good news. And I just wanted to reach out to you and touch base with you on a couple of things. Today this camera shot is going to be upright because we're not going to be handling a lot of hardware in the sense of regards to specific lots of you know varieties of stuff like that. Actually, we're going to be dealing with um, a concept. And that concept is... The difference between fiber channel versus fiber channel over ethernet. Now, first we have to talk about, you know, before you can talk about fiber channel over ethernet, you have to talk about what is fiber channel. Well, this is fiber channel. Fiber channel is a storage protocol that uses a proprietary fiber optic system known as a SAN, a storage area network, and it communicates on 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on gigabit bandwidths going up the pipe using traditional devices such as this HBA adapter, also known as a host bus adapter. Now the key thing about this is of course this particular QLogic, which is a very common QLogic card used in Fiber Channel, is specifically dedicated to a very secure way of handling your storage where there's no penetration because the protocol has nothing to do with IP addressing, Ethernet or anything like that at all. So with that being said, fiber channel networks, also known as SANS, storage area networks, basically work on the principle of a highly proprietary, highly secured network-based environment that in its place provides you the ultimate and very, not completely 100% secure, but very well secured storage network that houses your very sensitive data. It has a very high precedence in both enterprise implementations and corporations. Now, the problem with Fiber Channel is it's incredibly expensive. So the question comes up, how did the industry figure out ways to get around all of that excess expense and excess proprietary networking uh, between site to site or multiple sites and so on? Well, the secret answer started first off with a protocol known as iSCSI. Uh, iSCSI basically is is basically internet SCSI interfacing. You're using your network card to take your resources and treat it like what we call a LUN. A LUN is an increment of storage capacity that's being passed between two security keys between two network adapters. And in this case, these are Ethernet network adapters. Now the key thing about Ethernet adapters, as you can see here, is they're using CAT5 or CAT5e or CAT6. They're very fast, but they're not com comparable to the speed or the transmission ratios of a fabric-based HBA, but it works inside your network, your Ethernet network that uses TCP IP to transport information. So what does that basically mean to you, the guy who doesn't have a lot of money but needs to be able to bring some of the older fiber channel network environments through your old SANS through a process where you could bridge a site to a site without running dark fiber and all that overhead. You could use your existing pipe, use a piece of your bandwidth to replicate data between point A and point B, do it in a scheduled and restricted format so you're not eating up all your bandwidth, but geez, you just did this with a fairly easy process known as fiber over IP. In other words, FCOE. Fiber channel over Ethernet is basically encapsulating the fiber channel network protocol into a tunnel that is set up on an Ethernet connection between point A and point B, what we call the source and the target. Now, at that point in stage, the source and the top target exchange a security key, and then they become linked. That becomes your FCOE interface link between point A, in this case site A, and point B, or your site B location. And you've tremendously reduced the overall expense of trying to add in all that extra fiber channel in as you need. Now that doesn't negate the fact that you lessened the level of your security level in the regards of point to point connection using ethernet. And that means TCP IP. But because of the encryption key point to point, it's a fairly lower impact than you think 
because of two reasons. One, replication point A to replication point B is an encrypted linkup. Second, you have a point A to point B encrypted key sequence that will basically lock in those two points and keep that data secure between those two specific layers of protection. It's not as secure as a SAN environment, absolutely not, but it's not too far lower than a SAN environment in regards to looking at the costs that which you have. Please understand that when you do FCOE, you have to do the due diligence. You have to be there and you have to track the logging and you have to make sure that your data is not at risk from point to point replication. This is a potential vulnerability, but if it's handled correctly, it's not a risk because you catch it as it happens. Ignoring your log sec environments or your sec ops environments are not keyed to monitoring those point to point connections. Yeah, you could be at risk. So take that in consideration. One of my patrons out there who is a member of the YouTube group said, hey, you know, we really liked how you did the 10 gig stuff. Could you talk a little bit about FC versus FCOE? So that's exactly what I did here tonight. I hope this helped a little bit. And I hope it was able to reach out to and, and kind of raise this up a little bit to explain it how, yeah, you can use your today's Ethernet network, whatever bandwidth you have between your two sites, to supplement a fiber channel network. It's feasible. And it does take some steps. It's not a process um, that is difficult, but it is a one, two, three, four process that you have to walk through to make sure you have everything in place to support it iSCSI has been a very common secondary version of FCOE, but it's actually the grandfather of FCOE because iSCSI was to use cheap storage capacity, funnel it through an, I an Ethernet IP address to whoever needed it, and to offer cheap, low bandwidth capacity. And you had SATA disks in the background, just to point out how slow it was. But iSCSI was dictated by the speed of Ethernet. Now that was back in the days of a TX100 connection, or back in the days when one gig was awesome. But in many home labs, you have 10 gigabit infrastructures. So you actually have the capacity to add a SAS array solution that's fiber channel. If you've got the controller interfaces, path through FCOE, and by path, pathing through FCOE, you're able to skip the overhead of some hardware that you don't need and hey recycle repurpose put into operations i'm all about that well this is brad dyke signing off i hope you enjoyed this god bless and please enjoy what you do take care